Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of I Love Being Sober. My name is Tim Westbrook. I'm the CEO of Camelback Recovery and Camelback Integrated Health and Wellness here in the always sunny and always sober Scottsdale, Arizona, where my team and I, over the course of many years, have helped thousands of people on their path to recovery. Visit camelbackrecovery.com to learn more about our treatment strategies for mental health, alcoholism, drug addiction, and we even offer recovery coaching so that you can enjoy the freedom and happiness you've always searched for. Today, we're going to talk about building a foundation for health, sobriety, stress, mental health, and we may go off on a few tangents. Leading Longevity Authority, Troy Casey, is here with me today, aka Certified Health Nut. He has successfully restored physical, mental, and emotional balance to himself and to clients who have failed with all other systems. His unique holistic approach uses nature-based simplicity to anyone who can follow. As a Versace model in Milan, in Italy, 30 years ago, Troy studied nutrition, herbs, inter internal purification as a way of looking and feeling great in front of the camera. And I read his book, uh, ripped at 50, and he talks about being a Versace model, and he was a freaking disaster at that time. I can't wait to talk more about it. I mean, he was definitely the epitome of a drug addict and alcoholic at that time, so, so it's going to be fun to talk about that. And his book, Ripped at 50, A Journey to Self-Love, has sold thousands of copies and is transforming lives around the globe. He continues creating educational and inspiring content every week that helps people around the world lead healthier lives. Troy's YouTube channel has more than 110,000 loyal subscribers, and he's been featured on the Discovery Network, MTV, Fox News, and most recently appeared on the Netflix series, Chad and JT Go Deep. Today, Troy's work goes a step beyond biohacking your own body and mind. He has a grand vision for co-creating a world with clean air, water, soil, and equitable systems for all mankind in his lifetime, something he believes is absolutely attainable. Troy, welcome to the show. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for having me on, Tim. I'm very excited to be here. Yeah, this is awesome. We met at a, a cold plunge sauna party. We have some mutual friends, and that was a super fun, super fun group of guys and women that are into biohacking and longevity, health, and all those other kinds of things that I'm into that you're into as well. And so that was a great place for us to meet. And I'm just really looking forward. I've read your book and I'm looking forward to digging more into your story. So why don't we dig into it? Tell me your story. Where are you from? What happened? How'd you get to where you are today? Well, it depends on what angle of the story that you want, because I've got many stories. But I was born in Connecticut. My parents were uh, hippies. We left for the summer of love in 1967, ended up in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. So right then and there, you know, my parents thought different. And uh, from there, you know, I grew up both in San Francisco and on the East Coast and uh, had some challenges there at home. I left home very early when I was 14 years old. And... Um, headed out on myself and I was incarcerated as a youth. And then I did a lot of studies when I was in juvenile hall. And when I got out, I was able to graduate from a regular high school. And then I continued on to college and, uh, you know, always used my brain. And then I learned how to lift weights when I was incarcerated as well. And so I used that time to rehabilitate myself because I watched the kids that were in foster care and I watched it just be a revolving door of sickness and illness and psych meds and all sorts of stuff. And it was a dead end road. And I, w I witnessed it because I was there for a long period of time. And I would witness the kids come in and out of the foster homes and go from one facility to the next. And juvenile hall was just one of those facilities. When did you first experiment with drugs? When I was 13, 12 or 13, mm -hmm. I, I started okay. smoking pot then. And so uh, my research into that, you know, it really fucks with your development. And uh, so that was uh, 12 or 13. Then I started experimenting with psychedelics and it wasn't until, you know, my, my late teens and twenties when I started drinking and drinking, I didn't even like drinking in the beginning. And so then I just got caught up with that. I started modeling and uh, the travel and party lifestyle 
in the modeling industry was combined. And every new city that I went to had a nightclub that was usually run by the mafia and the models used to hang out there. And so it's a big business, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so I got a little caught up in that, my own success. And, uh, you know, I didn't know who I was and I put a lot of that in my book. I didn't know who I was and what I was doing. And so I was just chasing paper. How did you end up going down that path of becoming a model? Like, how did that happen? So you go from, you know, your, whatever your life was and you know, you're in juvenile hall and you're thinking a lot and realizing kind of what you want your life to look like. Is that correct? And I had no, I had no idea, Tim. That's, you know, I, I was programmed by the system, right? Hustle and grind and sit down, shut up, consume, conform and comply which is the industrial aid school system. I didn't know anything I was doing. I was chasing paper, just like anybody else, you know, get a job, get an education, you know, go out into the real world and then work for the rest of your life. And I'm not afraid of work at all. It's just, uh, you know, what the heart desires and what my gifts are, you know, the human beings gifts, they're not honored. So you're designed to stick your square peg in a round hole and we don't always fit into those molds. And I think, you know, a lot of your work revolves around addiction. And I see people getting into addiction, self-medicating the pain that they're going through from the lies that they've been sold and told in this culture that we live in. And there are no victims. So I don't ever want to play the victim card. It's just, where are we at in human history? My second book is coming out very soon called Brave New Man. It's an allegory to Brave New World, Aldous Huxley's dystopian novel from the fifties. And so, you know, it's really about becoming clear and understanding what our hearts desire and getting a clear picture on where in the direction that you want to go as a man, because if you don't know where you're going, anywhere will do. And we see this all over the internet. People are really struggling right now with their lifestyle. They have no base core values and a platform to build from. They're just going through the motions and trying to get a job or, you know, university education, which was supposed to help you propel forward. But now what we're realizing is that it's a complete indoctrination. It's brainwashing at its best. And so people are working in industries that are detrimental to the all, to the future of humanity, selling pharmaceutical drugs, selling agribusiness, pesticides, neo-insecticides, you know, the big shell game with real estate and everything else. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're caught up in the way the systems are. And so it's just time to break free the systems, you know, total freedom and go beyond what we've been told and sold. And so a baseline for that is your own health, your own journey to self-love and what is self-love. It's not just another hashtag on the internet, right? It has to do with, you know, your hydration and water intake has to do with your organic nutrition intake, or you're getting sick from eating the commercial foods, seed oils, gluten, et cetera. And so if you go into the mainstream, you can guarantee that you're going to be metabolically dysfunctional. Nine out of 10 people are, and then you've got, you know, then that opens up the, the area for all these psych meds. And then once you get on the psych meds, that creates other imbalances, or maybe you get an injury and then they prescribe you painkillers, Oxycontin, which is synthetic heroin. And lo and behold, synthetic heroin, fentanyl, lo and behold, we've got major problems with these issues. And so people are going to self-medicate the best way they can. What's socially acceptable? Well, alcohol pharmaceutical drugs, marijuana, and these things open us up for more self-medication. We get trapped into our own addiction cycles. And so we're managing our addictions to the degree we're managing our stress. And most people don't know where our stress is coming from. And they think that stress is an emotional outburst, but that's the sum total of being overwhelmed. And so I put in the book, the seven factors of stress, so people can manage and mitigate themselves. They know where it's coming from. So for example, thermal stress, which we partake in, right? We go in the extreme heat, the sauna, and we go in extreme cold, the ice bath. And this helps us regulate our autonomic nervous system. So we're self-regulating and self-managing. Otherwise, we're going to self-medicate. And that is a road that leads to a lot of pain. Isn't that right, Tim? It definitely does. So we're starting to get into, we're talking about a lot of the things that you're an expert on. And so I've got the question before I really wanted to, I did want to hear, I did want to hear a little bit about being a model in, in Milan and kind of 
what happened there. I don't know if you want to give me a couple of yeah, a quick story on how you became a model and what happened and what your lifestyle looked like while you were a model. And when did you realize that's not what you wanted? So it took me a little while because I just thought I was a young college kid. Okay, this is the way you make money. This is easy money or big money or whatever idea I had in my head. And so first and foremost, people would walk up to me in the malls or, you know, just in public and go, hey, are you a model? Have you ever thought of modeling? Agents, people like that would walk up to me and say that. And after hearing that a handful of times, I figured, oh, let me take some pictures and go in and see some agencies. And I was in New York City for a summer, took some pictures, went into Wilhelmina. They were very interested in working with me, but I lived on the West Coast at the time. I was in, I was in Southern California. And so... I went to one of their sister agencies and the Germans shoot their catalogs in sunny places because it's freezing in Germany. And if you got to shoot your summer catalog, you can't shoot it there. So they would go to places like Miami and then San Diego opened up and they would shoot their summer catalogs in the winter. And uh, San Diego, they thought was going to become another Miami beach for the German catalogs. And so my agent, Nina Blanchard at the time, it opened up there and then I quickly moved to LA and started interviewing with agents from Milan. I got a contract with an agent in Milan and I quickly left after there. And that's, you know, this is 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago when doing the men's fashion shows or doing their magazines, like we had GQ over many years for fashion in this country. And now that's usually a celebrity on the cover. Well, over there, they had Vogue and about I would say five or six major men's fashion magazines. And so it was a good place to go get work and, and tear sheets and work inside fashion and then come home and make the commercial money in New York and LA and Tokyo and other places. And so what I didn't realize, there was so much dysfunction, psychological dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, and it was getting played out there. There was a lot of sexual innuendos, a lot of homosexuality, and that's just something that I wasn't into. Yet it was just unspoken, you know, rules and gatekeeping. And I didn't like that. I grew up on the street and I usually handled my business, put my best foot forward, put a good product out there myself, the photographs, my resume. And lo and behold, somebody be gatekeeping and I wouldn't get certain auditions. I also had digestive problems and I used to bloat. So the agents would be ruthless and they'd be like, honey, no, no auditions for you today. You look fat, you know? And so I was like, okay, I mean, what does that mean? You know, I, you know, yeah. I feel I have indigestion issues. I've got, you know, all sorts of issues. I had asthma growing up. I was eating the commercial food supply like everyone else, TV right. dinners, Captain Crunch and Pop Tarts. And so this created imbalances. So again, you know, I, I'm not a fatalist. I'm an eternal optimist. And so our curse is our gift. And so there's two forces that guide everything, yin, yang, masculine, feminine, inhalation, exhalation, up, down, light, dark. So my curse was my gift. All my digestive issues helped me dig deeper into holistic health and really what am I made up of, the nutrition, et cetera. And so that was the beginning of that journey. So very positive. It got me into the health world and helped me educate myself. And I was economically motivated because my work depended upon that. So I did my first 10 day juice cleanse. I looked in the mirror. I looked 10 years younger. It made me look and feel amazing. And so, and also with my digestive issues, whether it was from vaccines or whether it was from antibiotics, in my baby book, I had, you know, ear infections when I was younger and, uh, you know, that's directly related to the vaccines and the, and the antibiotics. And so lo and behold, whatever happened to my digestion again was a gift. And for the last 33 years, I have studied internal purification, herbal medicine, fasting, and all other forms of healing. And I worked with a lot of indigenous healers as well over the years. And so, so that's how I got into modeling. Somebody said I should take some pictures. I started taking some pictures and then I started going down that road. Then I ran into some, some of my own, you know, blockages as far as being successful, you know, as an entrepreneur, I've learned to fail my way to success. But in that industry, it was like, I put out a good product and then, you know, I got into the gatekeepers and I just, it was robbing my soul and it really pissed me off. And, it, and there was nothing I could really do about it. But the alcohol and drugs were free. So I just went out and partied, right? Idle hands are the devil's work. 
So I could work five days out of the year and pay my bills. So I had all this free time on my hand and I got caught up in my own dysfunction. And so, and it wasn't until, you know, hundreds of people told me, you know, hey, you're wasting your potential. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, I'm partying too, but what are you doing? You know? And so I really started to question that. And after hearing it a hundred times or so, I was like, yeah, there's something of value to pay attention here. And I started going to the 12 step meetings and I recognized that step 11, there was a je ne sais quoi about the guys that would speak about step 11 through prayer and meditation. We sought, you know, higher realms of understanding or, you know, however that step goes. And so, and I was just like, there was something special about the meditation guys, the guys that would talk about meditation. And so I started to research and investigate in that. And I heard about these meditation retreats. And so it turned me on to Vipassana meditation. And um, I had moved to Hollywood from Miami at the time and wanted to continue my career as an actor. And I realized I couldn't, you know, create a career or start a career at my age while I was still drinking and partying. And so I had to get my shit together. And so it was the meditation. I was waiting tables at the time. And another waiter said, oh, I sat the granddaddy of all meditation retreats, these Vipassana retreats from SN Goenka. And they're 10 days in silence. And so it's not a lot of theoretical elements. It's really a lot of practice. So 10, 12 hours a day of meditation. And it was like an instant lobotomy. Well, it wasn't instant. It was 10 days, right? Very intense, 10 days, no walk in the park. And so, but that rebooted my system. And I sat 11 of those courses in a span of about six years. And I was practicing a couple hours a day and it really helped heal my nervous system. And it really helped me, you know, dig deeper into myself. So Vipassana meditation, you know, really helped me out from there. And then that allowed me to smile from my heart in the auditions. And I had a lot more success, especially with television commercials. And, uh, and it just helped me dig deeper. And then I was, I was working with an herbal company in the Amazon because I'd been studying herbs for about 15 years previous to that. And these herbs that I started taking were extremely powerful. And I won a trip with the company and I went down to the Amazon and I kept elevating my consciousness to a higher level and realized that, you know, we're all in symbiotic relationship with this earth and the way we're treating the earth with industry, it's destroying our ecosystem, right? And not in a hokey climate change, global warming, totalitarian tiptoe kind of way, because we got to get beyond oil. And these electric cars are no better for the environment, potentially much worse for the environment than we're making it out. And so oil, you know, is our top down destructive component. It's helped with manifest destiny and help us get around the world. But now what are we going to do? So I had some very powerful visions in the Amazon. I was drinking the ayahuasca, the the powerful herbal medicine down there. And I had some very clear visions. And uh, the final one was that humanity makes it from the precipice of ecological disaster that we find ourselves at. And so, you know, we live in the United States of America. We haven't drilled for oil in Yosemite yet, or, you know, any major national park that has beauty like the Grand Canyon or something. But if you go down into South America or Africa, we just decimate lands and give people a slave wage to pull it out of the earth. And if they don't play those games with us, we give them economic sanctions. And so I read John Perkins' book, economic, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, to really understand the way of the world and the world that I live in so that I can affect change in the world and positive change, not just change, but transformation of human consciousness. And we're going through this already. I studied a lot of the Mayan temples. I went there on pilgrimages. I went to the Incan temples. You know, there has been technology and understanding that is still explained, unexplained by our anthropologists and historians, the Nazca lines, the Egyptian pyramids, right? Human beings didn't lift those stones, right? It's, it's impossible. There's been mathematics done on that. And so, so there's something much more than we've been told and sold. And then you look into the history of propaganda and Edward Bernays, who is Freud's nephew, and you see the manipulation of human consciousness. And so, and we see this in television advertising. That's why people feel like shit about themselves. They're programmed to feel shit, like shit about themselves. And again, back to that self-medication component, which then falls into addiction. 
and we're managing our addictions to the degree we're managing our stress. And if we don't know where the stress is coming from, it summates in the body and then boom, back again to the self-medication. And so I think if we self-medicate ourselves with the fundamental baselines, the movement, the hydration, the nutrition, the sleep, you know, there's so much misunderstanding around sleep. Sleep is the way the human body heals itself. It's the anabolic phase. There's so many people. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Most men my age, I would say basically anybody that's in the gym is on TRT, hormone replacement therapy. So you're paying a pharmaceutical company to manufacture your chemical messengers inside your own human body. And so this is not a natural way. There will be a price to pay. And so, and this goes along with all pharmaceutical drugs. There, just look at the side effects of anything that you're taking. Download the side effects from the manufacturer of those and ask yourself, is that what you want? And, or look at your last doctor bill. Is this what you're being treated for? Is the side effects from these medical drugs? So people aren't using the common sense. It's been subjugated for what's been force fed down the pipelines of the news media. You know, again, by psychological design, Edward Bernays was Freud's nephew and he wrote the book Propaganda. So I say the, you know, the final frontier, the battlefield right now is on the human mind, right? And so, and it's affecting the children. They're coming after the children because they want to program the children. Anyways, I'm going a little too sideways. <laughs> and so getting a little carried away, but again, I saw some powerful visions. I'm very clear on what's going on. I'm connected to my heart and I'm moving forward. So what gives you the right to claim you are an expert on building a foundation for health? Well, I think, you know, the only way that we can lead or any expertise or any authority is to have those ideas crystallized in our own body. Body and mind, there is no separation, even though in the Western world we have separated that, but there is no separation. Mind is an embodied process. So you are the sum total of all your ideas that are crystallizing inside your own structure. And so nine out of 10 Americans or nine out of 10 people are metabolically dysfunctional right now. So 70% of the American people are obese or overweight. You've got anxiety, depression, suicide, suicide amongst men. You know, these things are, are all of our statistics are going through the roof. And so Jay Krishnamurti says it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. And so, and most people are trying to get their square peg into the round hole. And so, so for me to have any kind of authority, it has to live inside my body and mind and my lifestyle. What have I been able to create? Well, I have two children. You know, I came from a dysfunctional home and I've done the best I can. I'm not perfect. I've done the best I can to break the chain, right? I have two wonderful children in their teenage years. I was fucking hell on wheels when I was a teenager. And so there was no listening to anybody. And so I have children that are very knowledgeable, very well behaved, very happy, right? That's the true test right? How happy they are, how much I can pull them off the devices. And we had zero media there for many years until coronavirus happened. And then all of a sudden, all the kids are on Zoom for hours at a day. How the fuck is that? You know, human bodies meant to move. Movement is necessary for health. And so how are you going to sit a kid in front of a computer for six hours? You know, that's detrimental to their development. So I've done my best to pull them away from the systems at, at the same time, helping them be strong inside the systems. And so leading by example, walking your talk, you know, that's the only way I can have, you know, my real authority. I'm happy to take off my shirt. I always do. And again, I'm not on anabolic steroids, PEDs, you know, any kind of synthetic drugs. And I live the natural lifestyle. I'm not saying it's right or wrong if anybody does anything different than that. I'm just saying, this is what you get. You get clarity of mind. You get strength in the body. You get less aches and pains, more peace and harmony, good sleep, a hard boner. You know, this is what we want, right? We want our stuff to function. 
And when it gets into dysfunction, that's when we get into problems mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You know, we start comparing ourselves to other people on social media and their highlight reel, right? Why don't we have our, our, our what's the opposite of a highlight reel? You know, let, let's have all our vulnerability poured out there. Let's get the reality yeah. out there. And, and I also postulate authenticity is the new commodity. Get with the program. If, if it's all bravado, you know, that, that, that's short-lived. Or what, what we have here with the liver king on $12,000 worth of PEDs telling you it's liver, that he's getting his results for his, you know, ripped body, his, his overgrown, overdeveloped muscle body. Right. And so, but that's lies. It's lying, cheating, and stealing. So we go back to the virtues. We go back to the, all the religious texts have the same axioms, right? Live in alignment with the truth or some form of the truth, right? And, and that is going to be displayed in your biology, physiology, and psychology. It's hard for me to learn from someone that's like this and doesn't have good posture, has a gut blown out, right? They're soft. It's very hard for me to learn from that. And, you know, you see all varying degrees of that all over the internet. My mentor is the great Paul Check. He can still deadlift at 61 years old, about 450 pounds. And he has 15,000 students worldwide. They're usually the world's top trainers that works on sports teams and et cetera. And so I want to learn from people that have what I want and desire. Again, back mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And I don't want to paint a picture that there's any perfection. I have plenty of shortcomings. I have plenty of issues. And I consider that spiritual fodder for my own awakening, right? Never playing the victim. And so I'm grateful for all the challenges. It's helped me become the person that I am becoming. And so, but look, like all the martial arts masters, they teach fundamental principles. What do they teach? punch, block, kick. To punch, block, and kick as an expert at higher and higher levels, you may need nutrition. You may need sleep, right? So it starts going into philosophy. You may have a spiritual awakening. You may require one to go deeper into your martial arts practice. Well, this is no different. The body needs sleep. The body needs hydration. We are in symbiotic relationships, with the earth, with each other, nature. And I cover this all in my book. The most important in chapter one is legacy, dream, purpose. Because if you don't know where you're going, anywhere will do. And like me and my modeling world, there I was, not knowing where I was going, not knowing what I was doing. And then I got caught up. And so I think it's most important fundamentally for men to have direction and purpose in their life from their heart's desire, not from me or my mind or some other talking head on the internet, from your heart's desire and getting very clear on that mental picture. Now you're programmed how to monetize that. And that's not what I teach whatsoever. Get your heart's desire clear, do what you love, the money will follow. And so it's like putting the cart before the horse with the education that we've been taught in, in the industrial age school system. So again, I don't want to get too sideways. I hope I'm answering your questions. No, I'm hearing lots of good stuff. It's like mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, they're all connected. I know if I'm spun out mentally, emotionally, it affects my physical performance. It affects me physically. I was at Optimize, which both of us are, are familiar with Optimize. And I was hanging out in the sauna with a guy and he was talking about how his back is all screwed up. And he was talking with, I remember it was like a Reiki professional or something like that. And she was asking him about his, like what's going on in his life. And it's like, that's so appropriate. That's not the norm. The norm is like, my back is screwed up. So let's figure out what's going on physically. Which, or take yeah, a pill. physical, that's part of it, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally, what's going on there? Because that's, and I know for me, I'm training for this half marathon right now and I have a coach and she writes my workouts for me and I do intervals and my intervals are timed. And, and if I'm spun out emotionally, spiritually, physically, my results are not as good. It's very obvious to me that I need to sit in meditation, I need to journal, I need to work through whatever it is that's going on in my life before I'm going to perform physically. 
And that speaks to everything. It's just, for me, it's very clear. Well, just get your mind right, period, on all aspects and claim forth that which you desire. Because yeah. it's and I, and I love, and I love way. that you're talking about purpose too. And I know everybody has to have a purpose. Our sober living program is based upon our five pillars, accountability, support, structure, community, and purpose. Everybody has to have a purpose. And I really loved what you said about having a purpose that's aligned with your values, that's aligned with your heart. And so figuring out, and I think a lot of people are just blown in the wind. And if you're just blown in the wind and you don't really have a purpose, it's like, it's so easy to relapse. It's so easy to go back to your anxiety, your stress, your overwhelm, whatever it is that you have going on in your life. If you don't have a purpose, if you don't have something that you're waking up in the morning for every single day, and I think, I do believe the money will follow. If you're, I mean, you need to be intentional about it. I mean, it, it doesn't just fall in your lap. However, doing something that having a purpose is so important for people to be healthy. Well, it, yeah. And I, I do want to say this, work with excellence in the stepping stone job that you're in. Because how do you expect to be excellent in your own dream if you're not excellent everywhere else? As above, so below is the natural law of correspondence. As within, so without. And so it's all interconnected and interrelated. And so be excellent in the shitty job that you have. Grow out of it. Or you'll be surprised at a manager or a CEO that recognizes a certain work ethic. And so I'm not talking about advancing up the corporate ladder, but you can have whatever you desire. You have to get the mind right first. And if you're in a job that pays your bills and gives you food and gives you a roof over your head, be excellent in that. Too many people, you know, and, and I'm a boss, so I hire people. Too many people just want to phone in their employment, right? They just want to show up as a warm body. But something else is required for you to rise up beyond that system. You have to be excellent. You have to be great within yourself. And so too many times I see it that people just give up. Well, it's, it's on that note, it's what you do here is what you do here is what you do here is what you do here. And how you do you anything go, is you how are. you do everything, right? right. Yeah. Right. It's how you do anything is how you do everything. And, and people notice it and it living, you know, doing your very best, always do your best is something that I've adopted in my life. It hasn't always been, I haven't always done that. I haven't always lived that way, but I'll tell you what, I feel a hell of a lot better when I'm doing the very best that I can and it opens doors. And here's the other thing about that, because then I see that the, the, the pendulum swings both ways, right? Lots of times we're so hard on ourselves to do the best. We'll also start working with forgiveness. And once you start to learn to give yourself a, a pass on this, that, or the other thing, don't beat yourself up, then start handing out passes to other one, other people. Because we are perfectly imperfect and everybody's fucking up at all times at whatever varying degrees. And so... If we're too hard on ourselves, we're going to be too hard on others and we're going to burn our relationships out. And so including the relationship with self. And so do your best and wherever you've fallen short, work with forgiveness because that's also your best. Yeah. yeah. What specific incident inspired you to be so passionate about sharing your message about building a foundation for health? Well, I think I was born this way, as we all are, ch children of God, and we have tremendous gifts imbued by the power of the creator. We have the creation principle inside of us. We can create worlds, right? What does that mean? Well, if you put the penis in the vagina and you impregnate a woman, you can create an Elon Musk that wants to go to Mars and wherever else, right? So who knows what Star Wars stuff is going to come out of that? But literally, we can create worlds. Right? We have the power of creation inside of ourselves. And so when we understand that and we start to utilize that, we can create health. We can create peace and harmony and start going in the directions of our dreams. And we are told not so much the opposite, but 
Well, basically the opposite because it's sit down, shut up, consume, conform, and comply, and you'll get a good job and you'll get to advance. And if you are smart enough and complying enough, you get to be a doctor or a lawyer. And most doctors are out there are just drug pushers. They're, they're pencil pu pushers with a, with a degree and a lab coat telling you to take this poison. It's all legal and stuff, you know? Legal and lawful are two different things. And so, and then you've got the lawyers making white collar crime legal. They're making genocide and these other elements legal, right? Poisoning the commons, legal, right? Robert Kennedy Jr. has a whole body of work as a humor advocate, and he was working on mercury and the tainted fish and, you know, how that was affecting people. And these women with vaccine injured children kept on showing up. Oh, you fight corporate crime against mercury. Well, have you looked at this? And look at my, look at my maimed child. Can you look at this? And he's like, whoa, that's, you know, way too out of my league. But these women kept coming and coming and coming until he finally looked at it. And now he has a whole body of work dismantling all the propaganda and the rubbish around vaccines and what they do to human beings, especially the thimerosal and the adjuvants and the mercury that is put in the vaccines. And so I forgot how I got off on that tangent. But uh, forget something about either excellence or, well, there you go. He's an attorney, right? So he's actually using his God-given gifts inside the legalese system to show how corrupt it is. So absolutely corrupted. And obviously he's been banned on social media, or at least he was last year. And so, and what did we roll out last year? Vaccines that hadn't been tested, right? And so, of course, that's going to mess up profits. And so they just ixnate him from the internet, right? Why don't you go research his, his information? I funded, I helped fund the film 1986 act in 1986, all vaccine manufacturers were exonerated from liability. There's no other industry or corporation that's exonerated from liability from their products. That should tell people a lot should also, if you have any questions about these vaccines whatsoever, you should go on the VAERS, V-A-E-R, the adverse reactions. And so, and it's exponentiated. There was only 4,000 reported deaths of brain damage and lawsuits that have been won since 1986 up into 2020. And now just since 2020, I think there's been something like 19 or 20,000. These are documented, severely underreported VAERS, right? 1% of 1% right? Severely underreported and it's exponentially grown just in the last couple of years. So VAERS, check that out if people are really confused. Because here's the thing, the level of self-medication and alcoholism and, and drug addiction, you want to check out on many levels because on the soul level, you know that you're being absolutely lied to. And so you want to be as cognizant as you possibly can to understand the world that you live in. So you're not hoodwinked so much. So you don't feel like shit. So you go out and self-medicate. You really can be aware and you can stand to be counted. And the first thing that you really want to look into, because the, the food industry and the medical industry are intertwined, right? They invest in the poison and then they invest in the poison solution, right? The solution that they sell you, these magic pills. And so... You know, one of the first books I read when I was getting sober was, it was a book on biochemistry and how the imbalances can create imbalances inside of our body, nutritional imbalances, create Im imbalances inside of our mind. And then we go out and self-medicate. So one of the first things I did was I got down with my mineralization, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, really flooded my body with deep nutrition so I could stay somewhat balanced right? We live in an imbalanced world. So as good as I can do with the amount of pollution that's in the atmosphere, in the food, in the water, et cetera. And so, because once you know, right, knowledge applied is power. So knowledge is power, but knowledge applied is real power. It's integrating and embodying the ideas and understanding. Well, lo and behold, you start looking at the British Soil Association website and the soil is depleted. So it's challenging to get the right mineralization, especially if you're eating the commercial food supply. And so really de delving deep into nutrition because you are what you eat is an axiom that's not going away anytime ever. 
And if you consider mm -hmm. yourself an addict, then what are you eating, right? What is creating this addiction? And sugar is no different biochemically inside the brain. I think there's been a bunch of research than cocaine and heroin addiction. Right. So you, the same thing can be said about food additives. The same thing can be said about food additives and or the way they process these foods to bring them to market. These create imbalances in the body. And all the ancient sages have said, walk the middle path. You know, live a balanced life, find that level of balance. And we are clearly out of balance to the degree the environment is. And again, let's go back to statistics. Nine out of 10 are metabolically dysfunctional. 70% of the American people are obese or overweight. What's the statistics on mental health? We got major issues and suicide amongst men is going through the roof. There's a major mm -hmm. problem here. And mm -hmm. so we want to get back down to fundamental principles. And that is what my book is all about. In physics, they call them first principles. You can't go from here or a false premise does not make a true conclusion. So you can't base any of your hypothesis on faulty ground. And so we have to go back down to the basics. What does the human body need? Human body needs oxygen. Human body needs sunlight. Human body needs minerals vitamins and enzymes. And how do we get that? From food grown in nutritious soil. We need optimal breathing mechanics, diaphragm, pelvic floor, transverse abdominis. This needs to be integrated, not crunches. And so <laughs> we get these little six pack ab little muscles. That's not the way you develop that. You develop that, your abs poke out, abs are made in the kitchen, right? Not in the gym. Right? And people right. think it's all, all diet and exercise. That's another misnomer. You know, nothing is worse than a human being that's trying to outrun their bad diet in the gym. They're going to stress themselves out. They're going to burn out and they're going to gain more weight than they did before. You have to eat clean first and foremost. People say it's more expensive to eat organic food. Oh yeah, what's the price of cancer? <laughs> right. You either pay now, pay later, pay the farmer or pay the doctor. Yeah. It's your choice. So your body requires real food, not garbage. If you're sticking linear static inputs into a dynamic harmonic system, it will create chaos. And that is what we have in the world today. As above, so below. We've got chaos inside the human body and then just flip on the news. There's chaos uh -huh. in the world. It, it, right, 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 right. Which is all propaganda. Yeah, I think speaking to mental health and an addiction, it's like all of the things that you're talking about for someone to be, we all want to be happy and live a fulfilled life. And in order to be happy and feeling good, I know that I need, I need enough sleep. I need to eat the right food. I need to move my body. I need sunlight. I need to surround myself with people that have what I want. People that are not, not the victims, people that are responsible, people that are doing great things in the world, making a contribution, creating value. When I surround myself with those types of people, I put myself in the right environment with people that are doing the things that I want, people that have what I want, essentially. And that creates more accountability for me too, to continue living that type of a life because I'm surrounded by people that are living that type of a life. And all of the things that you talk about in your book, Ripped at 50, are just completely aligned with the way that I like to live my life. And I, and I see it in you and I see it in me and I see it with the people that I surround myself with is like, it's just like, hey, this is what I want. I don't want to be, I don't want to be at the doctor taking medications that are prescribed to me to, to hopefully feel better. It's not what I want. It, taking the well, proactive want, approach to it. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be subservient to the man, right? We already are for transportation, for food, for economy and functionality inside, you know, the government, et cetera, et cetera. And so for the most part, I don't want my biology being hooked up and lo and behold, they're already trying to do that with these vaccines, with the hormone replacement. Mm -hmm. Every woman that I know that has children that's over 30 gets on a thyroid medication. And if you really want to have challenges, abdicate your hormonal responsibility and balance to the systems, to the medical industry, because they definitely want your money and they want you maimed and sick for life. So you buy their products. 
And again, a lot of that, what I just said in that last sentence comes from Robert Kennedy Jr.'s research into these products from Yale and Harvard. Again, that event that I went to for that movie he was producing, he had all the scientific data on that from Harvard and Yale. And so these things, these vaccines are designed to maim you as a child and keep you as a customer for life. And a lot of the autoimmune issues, they don't manifest until later in life. And so dig down to bedrock for whatever you're sticking in the pie hole or the bloodstream. Don't mm -hmm. sell yourself short. Don't let them in the bloodstream, baby. Okay. Let's talk about sobriety. You were a wreck for a while. And so how did you, you go from being a wreck to having the life you have today? Well, it's been a process and uh, you know, we can be, we can be all doped up on anger, right? Mm -hmm. We can be doped yep. up on self, self pity, right? And those neuropeptides, they create chemical reactions inside the body. And those chemical reactions have other effects on the human body. And we can get caught up again, back into that self-medicating. And so feel better and more in balance when I'm balanced. And alcohol throws me out of balance, getting a hangover. But here's the news flash. I call it a food hangover or a sleep hangover. If I don't get the proper sleep now at 57 years old, I'm not going to be my cool self. I'm going to be short tempered. I mean, not always, but it, you have the potential that when you're stressed out and when you don't have balance and homeostasis in your body, then you can go off the handle. You can get into self-medication, et cetera, et cetera. So most of my lifestyle, because I'm very yang in general. So most of my practices are very yin. They're internal. I do a lot of Qigong, yoga, breath work. I go to the gym every day. I do some form of water therapy, whether it's hot or cold or both. I take mineral baths as well, especially with the magnesium being depleted in our soil. So all my work is to work towards balance and homeostasis myself. And so you don't need, one of my meditation teachers used to call that, what, what was the word he used to use? You don't need alterance in your life, right? Because you have balance and homeostasis. You feel good. I think most of the time when we're self-medicating, it is to feel good, right? Whether we want That's to feel it. mental the, pain. The, it's the addiction solution. And so whether it's a drink, a drug, gambling, sex, food, the internet, TikTok, the news, it's the solution. Yeah, we're addicted to those polypeptides. And so it's funny you bring up the news, you know, those are all addictive substances. I think the biggest addiction and misalignment that we have is pornography, right? We, mm. I grew up objectifying women. I can't even see that. It's been presented to me so many times. And I guess I probably need to break it down philosophically for myself, but I don't think that I objectify women yet. I've got years of pornography images inside of my head and I catch myself looking at tits and ass. Like I'm addicted, boom, polypeptide. Right. And I had no awareness about this until I got married. Right. And then I was like, whoa, I'm married now, but that's not slowing me down at all. And then I got <laughs> right, into right. pornography and I started dismantling it and understanding it better and the television programming that we have. And so divide and conquer is the oldest trick in the book. They don't want us looking at those who are in control of the food, of the drugs, of the energy and transportation and who's creating the media. They want us fighting amongst ourselves. And so, and look what we have today with all the race baiting and the toxic masculinity, male against female. So we don't look at the systems that have been built around us to make us miserable. And so I forgot how I got off on that tangent too, but yeah, I think it just comes back to, you know, a baseline of balance and finding those tools that work for you, tools and community, you know, community builds immunity to bullshit right? If you've got a strong community, the problem again is, is that we've all been so programmed to believe the TV. I was on pornography. That's right. So the pornography can throw us out of balance. We, and I interview, I've become friends with women and I've been celibate for a couple of years and, and really building long-term relationships with women. And what I see is, is 
oftentimes we settle, right? Because hookup culture in our world is, is pretty dominant, right? And so I think some inside some of the religious cultures, you still have, you know, safe sex for marriage, right? Some of the Christian fundamental beliefs and stuff like that. And so, and again, I'm not, don't get caught up in anything that I say, whether it's right or wrong. It's, it's, it's a balance of all these ideas and what you can put inside your own lifestyle to keep you balanced. So my point is, so I'm not making Christianity bad or good or trying to sell a religion to anyone. Mm -hmm. So the point is, is that I do believe that traditional values have tremendous value in today's world. Because if you do have sex with a human being, number one, you can get them pregnant. If you don't have the finances and the tribe is gone, so your parents aren't going to take care of them, your grandparents aren't going to take care of the children, unless you have a family unit, which you're very rare these days. And so, so you're not going to be supported. And then you have to work because that's the way they designed feminism. They pushed everyone into the workplace, right? That was by design. Gloria Steinem worked with the CIA. They don't, you know... They don't put that on the news, but that's exactly what happened. They want two people paying into the tax structure. So who's watching the children? Who are the natural nurturers of the children? Why do we have childhood obesity and childhood cancer rates going through the roof? And so the women used to watch the food and the children and cultivate and nurturing for them. But everybody's working now. So who's watching the children? The state is. And how well are they doing that? Well, 70% of the American people are obese or overweight right now. And so, and childhood obesity is going through the roof, ADHD drugs, ADD drugs, labeling people as bipolar, basically making them crazy. And then TikTok, video games, and pornography is A-OK. -okay. Let's not bring that to the forefront and put that on the nightly news. Actually, let's just embed it in all the television commercials. So the definition of pornography is in music videos. In fact, they get pornography directors to do Britney Spears videos and other music videos. And so, you know, objectifying women. And so again, you know, back to, you know, the, the levels of addiction, sugar is another one. And these create imbalances, right? Then people are unhappy and then they go and self-medicate, which creates more imbalances, alcohol, hangover. But again, you'll get the same thing, especially when you get up to my age, you'll get the same thing having a sleep hangover, not getting the proper amount of sleep. For me, it's like eating gluten. You know, I know that I will have a food hangover from that. And so I think the more you can balance yourself again with the fundamental principles, the punch block kick as the masters in the martial arts teach hydration, nutrition, sleep, movement, relationships, nature, the body requires nature, frequency and vibration for nature grounding. Otherwise you have all this wattage and voltage all this new technology that's going inside the human body. Traditionally, you ground out a wire by plugging it into the ground, right? And so what makes you think that you're any different? You're an electromagnetic being. You have electricity and magnetism in your body. So you're going to want to harmonize that as much as possible. And nature solves the majority of the problems. Get in nature in as many facets, as many ways as you can throughout the days and weeks because that will help you achieve balance, get back to natural food, get back to natural water, get back to natural circadian rhythms, get back to optimizing natural breathing. You should breathe into your pelvic floor. Your diaphragm should open. And so if you don't know how to do this, then, then get with a practitioner that can help reprogram your breathing apparatus, reprogram your biomechanics. Most people are trying to outrun their bad diet, but if they fine tune their nutrition, optimize their sleep hygiene, and manage and mitigate their stress, they won't have to go out run their bad diet in the gym. They'll have fitness right out of the gate. And then anything you do in the gym is extra, right? Well, there's extra I think, expertise. And yeah. every, I think everything, everything feeds off of each other too. If I'm eating healthy, I'm exercising. If I'm exercising, I want to eat healthy. If I eat healthy, I want to exercise. If my relationships are solid and I'm not putting myself in stressful situations, I don't want to act out and overeat, which you talked about the sleep hangover. I, I know occasionally I'll go, I'll, I'll eat a bunch of cake or pie or nothing but cake or something like that. And I'll tell you what, I feel it the next day. And that's kind of the point. I think it's a good place to be at. Like I'm totally aware of it. 
And, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, had I eaten a bunch of cake and pie and ice cream, I probably wouldn't have noticed the next day. But I noticed today because everything is so fine-tuned. And I think that's a good place to be at. Yes. I mean, a good place to be at is cognition and awareness as the number one step. And then from there, building out as much balance into your lifestyle as you can. Tim, I have another podcast I'm going on right now. Was that a full hour? That is a full hour. And is there a question that you wanted me to ask you that I did not ask? No, just, yeah, just anything that you want to, you want to ask. I mean, I help people bring themselves back into balance. I work with an organic superfood company. We deliver it straight from our farms to your family. I have online programs to help optimize your breathing, get into Qigong. Great. I have free stuff. And so, you know, please, if you, if you have any interest in understanding the holistic lifestyle a little bit more, then click onto my website, certifiedhealthnut.com. We have plenty of programs and free stuff for people over there. Okay, awesome. I have one last question for you. This is the question I ask everybody if you have time for it. Tell sure. me about your morning routine. My morning routine, I wake up and I start hydrating. And from there, I do something stimulating to get me going. So usually that's either a cold bath or a hot bath or a cold bath, cold shower. Uh, sometimes I use hot and then I get moving and then I go to the gym. I keep my mind straight. I wait about 90 minutes to have some caffeine. Currently I'm on a cup of coffee a day. And so I like to manage my caffeine usage as well. Otherwise it turns into an addiction and I can get really burnt out on caffeine. So one cup of that a day, and then I fast throughout the day. I usually come home from the gym, do about three hours, four hours or less of work. I like to work less and I like to film my lifestyle because my lifestyle is my work. And so that's my morning routine. If the children are here with me, I make sure I hug them, maybe cook them some breakfast, either that or uh, slave drive them into their own chores and making their own breakfast. <laughs> yeah, you know? there you go. Some days I like to make it for them and some days I like to teach them to make it for themselves. So, uh, uh, but I love all my kids as much as possible. I feed the dog. That's part of my uh, morning routine and uh, I brush my teeth. I brush my teeth before I start hydrating, get the bacteria out of there. That's part of my uh, daily routine. I, I do so many things that are baked into my lifestyle. I don't even think I have a daily routine, right? Okay. But there are some things that are non-negotiable. And that's usually jumping in some kind of cold water. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. That does it for our time with Troy Casey, AKA Certified Health Nut. And before we end this episode, I want you to go to the review section on iTunes or comment section of YouTube. Type in the one thing that resonated with you that we talked about today. Every comment counts and what you share could resonate with someone else that's struggling and potentially save their life. So go ahead and share the one thing that resonated with you in the review section. It'll take just 60 seconds out of your day, but what you share could not only save you, but it could also save someone's life. Okay, that does it for this week. I'm Tim Westbrook here with Troy Casey, and I hope that our paths cross again in the next episode of I Love Being Sober. God bless. If you found this video to be of value, be sure to like it. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos. Leave a comment if you have a question, if you've got something to say. Camelback Recovery provides treatment services for people struggling with mental health, mental illness, addiction, alcoholism. So if you or someone you know is struggling, be sure to reach out to us. You can go to our website, camelbackrecovery.com, or our information is in the comment section below. And we provide everything from detox, inpatient, outpatient treatment, sober living, recovery coaching, sober companion services. So either we'll be able to help you or we'll be able to refer you to people or treatment centers that might be a better fit. So I will see you in the next video.